Welcome to ERC Tips Nology. This time we will be continuing our discussion about Zener diet calculations. But before that, let's do some review of what a Zener diode really is. A Zener diode is a silicon PN junction device that is different from rectifier diodes because it is designed for operation in the reverse breakdown region. In other words, the Zener diode in order for it to do its job of maintaining a constant voltage, must be connected in reverse bias. How? The cathode must be on the positive side and the anode must be connected to the ground or to the negative side. If Zener diode is connected in forward bias, it will simply operate like a rectifier diode. What's the function of a Zener diode? It provides a stable reference voltage for use in power supplies, voltmeter, and other instruments. In other words, it will serve as a voltage regulator. This is a Zener diode data sheet where you can find the power ratings, temperature ratings, nominal VZ, impedance, power derating curves, temperature coefficients, and the Zener impedance. And uh, you will see it here at the top, the power ratings, temperature ratings, and it's pointed out here, the nominal, nominal Zener voltage, impedance values here, ZZT, ZZK, IZK, which is important. So as you can see here on the left side is the model of the Zener diode, for example, uh, 1N4732. And it has an IZK of uh, 1 milliamperes or 1 milliampere. And you will also see here the IZT, which is the recommended value for IZ to operate without problem. And that's equal to 53 milliamperes. And you will see here the power PD which is uh, having a value of uh, 1.0 up to 6 point, uh, 1 point or 1 watt. And it has a 6.67 milliwatt, uh, uh, milliwatts per degree Celsius. Now, the, uh, this is the power uh, temperature and uh, maximum power dissipation curve, which we call as the power derating. And uh, here is the uh, Zener uh, voltage on the x-axis and on the y-axis is the temperature coefficient, which we call uh, the temperature co coefficients uh, curve. And of course, this is the uh, Zener impedance uh, curves, which re are representing the IZ on the x-axis and uh, the uh, ZZ in the, or the dynamic impedance on the y-axis. So this is the basic uh, circuit of a Zener, Zener diode and or Zener Zener diode. And as you can see here, we have the input voltage on the left. And take note, this is in DC. And we have the R or RS, 220 ohms here. This is just an example. And this is the Zener diode, 1N4740. And the output voltage here, which is uh, equal to 10 volts. And there's no uh, load resistor connected here in this example. Uh, on letter B, this is the normal operating region for a Zener diode. This is the shaded area. So this shaded area represents the start of uh, having that almost constant or stable uh, VZ. And this only occurs on the VR and the uh, IR side, which is representing the reverse uh, bias uh, connection uh, curve. So this is called the reverse breakdown region or the area where we will be having a constant uh, VZ. So the Zener diodes are mostly used in voltage regulators and they provide stable reference voltages uh, used in power supplies, etc. And it maintains constant uh, DC voltage under the correct operating conditions meaning that there are uh, proper values for the R or the voltage input and even the load to say that the Zener diode will operate 
uh, in its normal operation because if there uh, there's too much uh, voltage input or the load resistor and uh, uh, even the R in series with our voltage input is wrong, then the Zener diode will be damaged. So a Zener diode is much like a normal diode, but it is, again, designed for operation in the reverse bias or uh, here in the reverse breakdown region. So the Zener diode uh, must be operated in reverse bias and uh, the Zener diode is set by carefully controlling the doping level during manufacture. The uh, characteristic curve of uh, a Zener diode in forward bias remains the same as the uh, normal rectifier diode. So recall that voltages that occur at the breakdown region here are almost constant. It's not a perfectly constant value, but when rounded off, it will be uh, uh, approximately constant. So uh, Zener breakdown occurs at much lower voltages here. So if you have a negative value of voltages here, meaning that uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, of course, negative 5 uh, mathematically is considered as uh, lower than negative 1. So uh, it will be occurring at much lower voltages. The Zener uh, diodes are heavily doped in order to reduce the uh, breakdown uh, voltage. So the more heavy doped it is, the more reduced the breakdown voltage will be. So we can get uh, negative 5 volts here or negative 10 volts and so on as long as the doping process is more heavy, meaning that there are more atoms, doping atoms added to a pure semiconductor atom and uh, for example if it is a pure semiconductor uh, uh, like a silicon semiconductor for example and when it is added a doping atom then the uh, level of uh, heaviness of the doping will depends on how much uh, doping materials or doping atoms were added so the more doping atoms added to a pure, uh, for example, silicon, then the, the more heavy it will be. Now, just to move on, the heavy doping will, uh, of course, be the reason why the uh, depletion region or the depletion layer will be very thin. And uh, therefore, a high electric field will exist within it. Note that the breakdown uh, voltage Vz field is intense enough to uh, pull electrons into conduction bond. So although it is in reverse bias, the uh, Zener uh, diode will, will be conducting current and it will allow current to flow, but the condition, under the condition that the output voltage will remain the same or almost constant. The Zener diodes are commercially available with breakdown voltages from 1.8 volts to 200 volts. When operating with larger uh, voltages, larger than uh, 5 volts, the avalanche uh, breakdown will occur. And note that the reverse currents up to this uh, VZ or Zener voltage are very small. The leakage current are very small. So there is also a maximum current, what, which we call IZM, before the diode gets damaged due to the excessive power dissipation. Take note that the higher current IZ that you apply, uh, there's a possibility that your IZ will be more than IZM. And when that happens, the diode will be damaged. In other words, we have to keep our IZ between uh, IZK and IZM only. That's why in the previous calculations that we have discussed, when the IZ is more than IZM, we write the Zener is not safe or unsafe. Now the diode data sheets will provide the uh, VZT and it will also be uh, providing us with the IZT.
So the uh, the data sheets uh, values are important also. So you have to lo consider looking at it before implementing a Zener diode in your circuit. Now this is the VI or voltage current or current voltage uh, characteristic curve of a 10 volt Zener diode. So on the right side, which uh, we will say that the Zener diode here is connected in forward bias where the Zener diode the anode is connected to the positive and the Zener diode the cathode is connected to the negative like uh, how we connect the uh, rectifier diode in a forward bias anode positive cathode negative if you do that to a Zener diode then the uh, forward bias region will produce the same curve that we are getting in a normal rectifier diode. So again, the uh, Zener diode is operating in the forward bias region similar to a rectifier diode. So uh, its function of providing the uh, constant voltage will not be done because you connected it in uh, forward bias. Now, if you want the Zener diode to provide a constant or stable voltage, then we need to connect the uh, Zener diode in reverse bias. And when we do that, the uh, characteristic curve will be different with the characteristic curve of a uh, rectifier diode. As you can see here, at a certain point in the negative 10 volts, the uh, Zener breakdown voltage uh, will occur and it will be at this point that the Zener diode will allow currents to flow in our circuit and uh, that specific value where the Zener allows the currents to flow will, will be called IZK and uh, with this value it's approximately equal to VZ and uh, this will be allowed but uh, if you continuously increase the current and it becomes more than IZ max, then the, the diode will be damaged as uh, it was mentioned before that the IZ greater than the IZM will be not safe for our diode. So if you will be asked whether the IZ is safe or not, then after calculating the IZ, you have to look at the IZ max and uh, compare them. So if IZ is less than, it's safe. And if IZ is greater than IZM, then it will be uh, not safe. By the way, the cut-in voltage mentioned here is also called barrier voltage or junction voltage or cut-off voltage. And remember that for silicon, it's 0 0.7 volts. And for germanium, it's 0 0.3 volts. So uh, also for IZK, it's also called IZ, small letter M, IZ min, or IZ minimum. Uh, there's a typographical error here. This is supposed to be minimum Zener current, not maximum Zener current. Sorry for that. And uh, the IZT is called test Zener current. And uh, this is the value which is recommended, or I mean, this is the average uh, IZ that is uh, uh, the best operating condition for the uh, Zener diode to do its uh, function of providing the constant voltage. So the IZ or Zener current that we will be uh, considering must be between IZK and IZ max. IZ max or IZM or IZ maximum, the, this all refers to the maximum Zener current. I, there's another typographical error here. It's not Zeber. It's uh, Zener current. Sorry for that. So again, this is the forward voltage. This is the reverse voltage. This is the forward current. And this is the reverse current. Moving on or uh, let's go to the next. The, uh, in other words, for a particular voltage uh, regulator to do its job of... Uh, giving a constant voltage, the Zener diode used in the regulator must be connected in reverse bias. And the input voltage coming to the from the filter capacitor or the filter circuit, which is uh, expected to be a rippled uh, or ripple waveform, 
will be uh, the the input to our regulator. So from the rectifier to the filter circuit to the regular regulator circuit will produce our uh, constant voltage in the load. So also take note that the voltage on the Zener diode is uh, equal to the voltage of the load. So this the VL is equal to VZ because they are in parallel and the parallel connections like this produce the same voltage. So again, this is the minimum current, IZK, and this is the maximum current, IZM. Now, what is a shunt regulator? This is a shunt regulator or shunt voltage regulator is a kind of a voltage regula regulator where the regulating element shunts the current to the ground. And the shunt regulator operates by maintaining a constant voltage across its terminals and it takes up the surplus current to maintain the voltage across the load. So that's basically what a shunt regulator is because it was mentioned here, uh, basic Zener voltage regulator or shunt regulator. Now the basis of equation for Zener regulator is that we will assume here in the circuit that the IZ is uh, more than or equal to the IZK. So IZ must be bigger than IZK or equal, but it must be less than or equal to the IZ max so that it will not be uh, damaged. And uh, the three basic formulas that we used before is the IT equals uh, the voltage on the RS divided by the RS or V in minus VZ over RS. IL is equal to VL over RL and VZ over RL. Again, VL is the same with VZ. And uh, by Kirchhoff's current law, the uh, total input here, IT, will be the sum of uh, IL plus IZ. Therefore, the IZ is the IT minus IL. Now, for the effects of the changing, uh, the effects of load variations or changing the load here uh, is uh, given on this uh, summary of the uh, formula. So, as you can see here, the RL is 0 ohm, therefore the voltage will be 0 volt, and uh, the IZ will be 0 ampere, and the IL will be equal to IT. Uh, in other words, uh, we are assuming that the RL is 0 ohm. Of course, there will be no regulation that will happen and the VL or the load uh, voltage here will also be 0 because there's no resistance. The resistance is 0, so the voltage on the RL will be 0. And uh, of course, the, uh, because of that, the voltage here will be 0. Therefore, the voltage on the VZ will be 0 because they are parallel and therefore the IZ will also be zero. So it's like the uh, Zener voltage will, uh, will not be able to do its job of uh, uh, giving a uh, regulated voltage here because the RL makes its uh, voltage to be zero. And uh, But uh, it will look like we have a one resistor here and the Zener diode can be considered just a simple wire. This is considering or taking note Let's say that the Zener diode will not be broken, although it's like we are shorting our uh, resistor across the uh, Zener uh, diode. So the I total will be equal to the input voltage divided by the RS. This is a simple uh, Ohm's law. Now, on the second situation, we uh, take note that the uh, RL is given the minimum uh, resistance possible in order for the uh, Zener diode to do its job, which is to provide a constant voltage. You see, there is a uh, required minimum or a smallest uh, load resistance that will be parallel to our uh, Zener diode. So to do that, we can calculate the minimum RL by dividing VZ divided by IL max. So the uh, quotient or the answer here will be considered as the RL min. Now take note, the uh, to get the RL min, we have to calculate for the IL maximum. So uh, considering the formula IL is equal to IT minus IZ, 
of course, if you subtract the smallest iz, which is izk, you subtract a small value to it, the answer will be a maximum value. So, il max is equal to it minus izk. Uh, in the opposite side, if you want to get the uh, il min, il min here can be taken by subtracting uh, iz max instead of izk. So, if ever that you want to calculate il min, it will be equal to it minus izm, which is the maximum uh, uh, Zener current. But here in this particular example, the il max is equal to it minus izk. So if you take the il max, you can now calculate for the rl min given the vz. Now, in the case of IT, we can subtract VZ minus V in divided by RS. Actually, we have done this in the previous examples, maybe. So just check, just check out the video about uh, Zener calculations. Now, for uh, the third example, where the RL resistance is infinite, if it is made infinite, the uh, resistance is, uh, let's say, very, very high or extremely high, of course, the higher the resistance, the current will be lower. So if it is made infinite, uh, the IL will, of course, become zero. And it's like there's no current that can flow in the load. And uh, for the IZ, the IZ that will flow here will be equal to IT. So you take note of the difference when the RL is zero, the IZ is zero. But when the RL is infinite, the IZ becomes equal to the IT. So IZ equals IT will be equal to V in minus VZ over RS. So these are the effects of uh, load variations on a Zener voltage regulator. Uh, there are three uh, situations where we made the load resistance to be zero. We made the load resistance to be minimum and we made it to be uh, infinite. Now, moving on, let's talk about the power in the Zener regulator. So, if the RL is 0 ohm, the R voltage or VL will also be 0. And, of course, the VZ will also be 0. If the VZ is 0, the power on the Zener will be 0. If the VL is zero, the power in the PL or the PL load power is also zero. And uh, we will only have a power in the RS, which will be equal to the power input. Now, to calculate for the power input, we have to take note of the formula multiplying voltage by the current. So, P in is equal to V in coming from here multiplied by the current, which is uh, IT. Another formula that we can use is the V in squared coming from V squared over R formula. Remember from power formula. So V squared or V in squared divided by RS. And uh, for IT, we can uh, calculate it by uh, dividing the V in divided by the RS. Now, if the RL minimum is used in our circuit, of course, there, there will be a uh, current on the load. So, uh, of course, when the resistance here is minimum, we are expecting that the smaller resistance will produce a higher current. So, there will be what we call as the IL max here. Take note, when the resistance is low, the current will be high. So, uh, IL will be maximum and the RL is minimum. And therefore, when you multiply the VZ or the voltage with the current IL max, the power in the load will be also maximum. Now, the power uh, on the Zener diode, of course, we'll, we will be multiplying the voltage of the Zener multiplied by the current of the Zener diode. So that's uh, V multiplied by I. And as you can see here, the power on the Zener will be minimum because the current that you are multiplying with the Zener voltage is also minimum. So minimum current in the Zener will produce a minimum power in the Zener. So Vz multiplied by uh, 
we multiply to IZK will produce PZ minimum. So on the case of in the case of the uh, RS, the PRS will just be uh, VRS multiplied by IRS, but IRS is also IT. So we can uh, say VRS multiplied by IT. By the way, IT uh, we can calculate it by uh, subtracting VZ by VN or from VN divided by RS. Another way is you can directly put here uh, V in minus VZ squared, which represents the uh, voltage on the RS divided by the RS. So these are the three power formulas when you are using the uh, Zener regulator which has, which has a, an RL minimum. Okay, so to continue, we have the situation where uh, the RL minimum, we can uh, get the power formulas, but first you have to calculate IT, you have to calculate IL max, and uh, after that you will be able to calculate the power of the input, or the power on the load, or the power of our Zener uh, diode. Now moving on, we have here the circuit for a uh, load resistor or load resistance which has a an infinite value so uh, in this situation again the it will be the same formula but you will notice here that the iz is now equal to the it and that happens because the il is equal to zero ampere here take note that this is an extremely high resistance so positive infinity resistance so the il the uh, extremely high resistance will make the current to be zero and it's like it's not it's like this is not there so in uh, therefore the rs will be uh, in series with our zener diode and the it because it is in zero in series now will be uh, iz i know this is in parallel but the IL is not existing, therefore the current IT will move on to the Zener diode, making it equal. So IZ, uh, you don't need to worry about it, it's equal to IT. And for power in, it's the same, V in minus IT, PRS is still the same as the RL minimum here. So this is VI and V in minus VZ squared divided by RS. But you will notice that the power in the load will now be equal to zero or zero watt because the RL is zero. Uh, sorry, the RL is uh, uh, extremely high and the current is zero. Um, because the current is zero, of course, the power will be zero. Now, in the case of the uh, Zener diode, the PZ max will be equal to uh, VZ multiplied by IT. So this is how the power in the Zener regulator will be if you are considering these three situations. Now, in our example uh, before, we have this uh, particular circuit where the uh, voltage is 20 volts before, but now if you make it 30 volts, the voltage input was changed to 30 volts. What's the effect? Is the IZ safe? So we calculate for IL, we calculate for IT, and we calculate for IZ. And then we will uh, compare this IZ with uh, the uh, IZ, IZ, uh, IZ max. And uh, it was the, it's not written here, but I remember that IZ max was uh, around uh, 55 milliamperes. So the IZ166 is uh, bigger than the 55 milliampere so uh, it will be very unsafe again the iz max here uh, in the previous uh, video was uh, 55.56 milliampere so 166 is bigger than 55 so it will be very unsafe now let's say uh, we write it down for you to, so that it will be more clear so this is what i'm talking about that the 166 is greater than 55 and it's very unsafe now the continuation let's say it's not 20 let's let's say it's 18 volts we made it smaller so you will notice here that after calculating the il the it and the iz we got 
uh, the value of 19, uh, around 19.76 uh, milliampere. Uh, and uh, 19 is definitely less.